Hi! Happy... Oh my gosh, it's Friday. Happy Viennese. I am doing a question and answer and just a fun little chat. There are so many new features. Hi Karina on Instagram Live. Let me see if I can add. No, okay, so you guys can actually like ask me questions and then it shows up in a different area or you can just post them in the comments. I'm gonna start with. Sorry if that was a loud noise. I'm gonna start with the questions I got from my stories when I posted a question and answer in my stories a few days, weeks ago. What is time? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just gonna be answering some of the most frequently asked questions that you guys have. And yeah, see where we go from there. Feel free to drop any questions below in the comments and I will answer them, yeah as I get to them. So the first question that I wanted to address, and actually I might, can I turn my, yeah, I can turn my camera around. So I'm going to show you guys my um, screen here on my laptop. So the first question I got, and I got two questions similar to this, which was how do you find out your conscious and unconscious human design chart? Um, and so basically this question came from me talking about the fact that I have two different types in my human design chart. So I'm a manifesting generator in my quantum chart, but when you pull, when you separate the two, right? Cause you have an unconscious and a conscious. And when you separate the two, I'm actually a projector in my conscious chart. So a lot of people have asked me questions about that. Um, it's, it's honestly one of my favorite things to talk about is like how you can be two different types. Like one of my good friends is a manifester, but when you separate her two charts, she's a reflector in both so that really shows up for her a lot too and my own personal example of me being a projector as well as a manifesting generator shows up for me a lot too so here's how you can find them i'm going to turn my screen around let's see if i can if you guys can see this hopefully can i zoom in yeah i can zoom in okay there are so many new features of instagram live this is freaking awesome Okay, so actually I'm going to zoom in on my laptop so that, whoop, that's a little too much. All right, so this is my favorite human design website to use. I also have a chart, chart calculator on my own website, which is astrologyhumandesign.com. Um, if you don't have a genetic, genetic matrix membership, then you can get a lot more information about your design there on my website. Um, but genetic matrix, you can look at so many different chart features and that is why I love genetic matrix so much. So anyways, here is how you view your three different human design charts. So where it says, and again, you'll have to have one of their membership options to be able to see this, I believe. Um, you go, so it'll say quantum initially, and then you want to go down to quantum component and that will give you this kind of like view of the three different types. So your design is your unconscious, your personality is your conscious, and then obviously your quantum is those combined. Um, so then to separate them and to see like individually what they are, you go to personality, which will be your conscious or your mind, right? And it's only gonna show you the black, the conscious side of your chart. And you can see here, it says splenic. Whoops, I don't know how to highlight just that, but it says splenic projector. And then if you go to my design, which is the unconscious, you can see I'm a sacral manifesting generator, just like in my quantum chart, but I have a lot less definition because it comes from my personality. So that is kind of how you can separate the two and see the differences between your unconscious and your conscious charts. So that was fun. I'm glad I got to show you guys that because I went live on TikTok yesterday and it wouldn't let me like change my screen around. So it was hard to, <laughs> I just had to like um, talk you through the process, but I like that I could just show you guys. That was fun. So that is how you can find the differences between your conscious and your unconscious charts and human design. And then someone asked about, um, where is that question? I know someone asked about, yeah, so what is the relationship, and this is from my podcast, someone asked what is the relationship between your conscious and unconscious chart? 
what does knowing your unconscious chart allow you to understand? So the unconscious chart is basically the part of yourself and your design that's just kind of running the show. It's like the innate part of you. It's also the part of yourself that you're probably a lot less or not aware of at all of operating from. It also gives you a lot of insight into your generational trauma, your lineage um, that you came here to really heal and play out so that you could heal it for your whole generation, right? And your lineage. So that is what the unconscious chart is. And having awareness around it just gives you a way to like know, again, these parts of yourself that you're not really truly aware of. So you can bring that awareness and operate more cohesively with both sides of your chart and both parts of your human design. Um, and then your conscious is the side of yourself that you're more aware of. It's your personality. It's like your mind. It's what you have conscious control over. There's an example in the human design community that Ra or who talks about a lot is the difference between your vehicle and the driver of your vehicle. So I like to say that astrology is like your roadmap, right? I think it's like literally like your map for life. It tells you, you can look at certain events, predictions, things like that. It's more etheric, more general. And human design is like the, the car that you're driving, like on that roadmap. It's like your GPS. Well, your GPS is really like your quantum chart, which is like the driver of your car. Your vehicle, your actual vehicle is your unconscious chart. Your actual vehicle is your design, right? That the red parts of your chart that are corresponds to your unconscious. And then your quantum chart is the driver of that vehicle. So that is why human design tells you how you're meant to make decisions because it is literally like you're driving the vehicle of your life, right? And you are the person in the car that has the steering wheel that's like, okay, this is how I know to go this way. This is how I know to turn left. This is how I know to whatever, right? that's your strategy and authority that's what's going to guide you through your roadmap of life and your personality your conscious side your conscious chart is like the passenger in your vehicle it's like going to be loud and tell you oh well you should do this like you should you need to do that you need to do you need to go here you need to turn left you, but it's like no <laughs> you're driving the car which is your quantum chart right your strategy and authority and that's telling you where you need to be going and when you need to be going there I like to say that like human design really gives you insight into how to operate in alignment with divine timing. Like everyone talks about divine timing, you know what happened in perfect timing, right? Human design literally tells you how to operate in alignment with divine timing and gives you like practical, tangible ways to make decisions to operate in alignment with your unique and specific divine timing. And this is why I freaking love human design so much. And it's so much more practical and tangible to me um, and, and working with clients as well, then astrology is a lot of the times. Like I feel like astrology, like I said, is more general, more like etheric, um, more, you know, about the actual like roadmap that you're on or driving. And then human design is literally telling you how to operate through the roadmap of your life with, you know, your ability to be able to make decisions and live alignment with your strategy and authority, which is like your literal inner guidance system, your inner decision-making process, your compass, like that's what human design is and the differences between human design and astrology. If you're just joining, I'm doing a question and answer. So feel free to ask me questions about human design, astrology, spirituality, lifestyle, business here to answer any questions you've got. Um, and then that leads me into the next question. So someone asked, and these are from my stories that I posted a few days ago, weeks ago, I don't remember. <laughs> Um, someone asked the basics. So how does astrology and human design even go together? So human design is a system that's comprised of astrology, the I Ching, the Kabbalah tree of life, quantum mechanics, biochemistry, genetics, astronomy. Um, I feel like I'm, oh, the chakra system. Did I say that already. It's like a combination of these kind of ancient traditional modalities that are maybe seen as metaphysical or spiritual and actual modern science. Um, and so how astrology comes into human design is that literally all the information in human design is pulled from the planetary placements. So if you have gate in, or you have um, your sun in gate 24, for example, your sun's gonna be in Taurus because each gate represents a different sect or like span of degrees within each zodiac sign. So like for example, Scorpio, like 13, 
13 to 18 degrees of Scorpio is represented in gate one. So like if you have anything in your astrology chart that is in 13 to 18 degrees Scorpio, you're going to have gate one in your human design chart. So that's literally where the information and in human design to create your chart comes from is the planetary placements. And that's where astronomy comes in too. Kelsey, I have a friend I want to pay for and send to you. How can we arrange this? Oh, hey, Yoni. Oh my gosh. Um, shoot me a message. I have a couple different reading options. You can book a reading through the link in my bio for them and then just put their email in there and it'll get sent to their email. Um, if you go to the link in my bio and you scroll down, I have some reading options there that are just audio or if you want to book a like one-on-one -on -one video session for them, you can do that through my website, which is also linked in my bio or just go to astrologyhumandesign.com. So it kind of depends on the reading style that you want to gift them with but we can talk about that if you have questions or anything. Um, so yeah, where was I? So yeah, astrology and human design, that's how they combine. And that's like, like I said, astrology is really like your roadmap and human design really gives you tangible ways to operate in alignment with your true self, which is why I love to blend them. Um, okay, so what is another question? What house system do you use in astrology and why? So I use the whole sign house system um, because it's the easiest, it's the most concise, it's the most cohesive, it's the most just easy and simple, simple, what's the word, like simplified to use. I've tried Plastis, I've tried Equal Houses, and I always come back to Whole Sign just because of how fluid and easy it is. It's also just makes my, like, reading astrology and even reading human design is all about tapping into your intuition and whatever is going to be the easiest way for you to do that whatever system feels the easiest for you to be able to kind of like let your mind step back and let your intuition come through um, in combination with like the knowledge you have of a chart is is what is going to make it such an impactful reading and what is going to give you more information too as well as like the knowledge that you already know about those placements or those things in astrology. So I use whole sign house system because it really allows me to just like let my mind kind of take a step back and allows me to tap more into my intuition when reading someone's chart. It also helps me read the chart more fluidly and more cohesively. So it's like, I also really like to create people's charts in my head. Like someone will just tell me their big three, like out on the street or at a coffee shop. And I'll be like, Oh, so you're an Aries rising and your Venus is in Libra. So that means like, Libra rules your seventh house, your Venus is in your seventh house. And so it's like using whole sign, it just makes that so much easier. Like I cannot even fathom trying to predict or create someone's chart in my head using Placidus or Equal House. It's like, that's not even a thing. <laughs> like you have to have a software program or like website to be able to calculate that for you. And I like to go the more natural route, the more like traditional route. I mean, whole sign is what they use in ancient astrology too and traditional astrology. So that's why I like it. Um, and like I said, it lets me just read the chart more cohesively. Like I can be like, oh, okay, so you're a Taurus rising. So that means your fourth house is ruled by Leo. So that means like your son is in the seventh house. So that's going to give me more insight into your fourth house, that kind of thing. Like that was just a total <laughs> out of my <laughs> like spur, spur of the moment reading. But that's kind of like how I like to read. Um, and whole sign just makes that process a lot more simplified and a lot easier without necessarily having to see someone's chart on a program video okay so yeah the video the only the one-on-one -on -one sessions i do like over video or through my website um, and those you have to schedule so you can go to my website astrologyhumandesign.com to i think the tab is book a session or book a reading and then you can see my schedule my calendar and then check with them on when they have free time and they can you can book it through that what part of your chart can you find your purpose mission? So your purpose is technically like, I'll break it down like this. The what of your purpose is your incarnation cross in human design. Uh, and I'll go into astrology as well. In human design, it's your incarnation cross, which corresponds to the four gates that are in the top section of your chart. I wonder if I can, oh, I can add a picture. Tapping a photo or video will show it right away. Okay, so let's use this as an example. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I've never used this feature. <laughs> okay, um, is my face covering the other part of your chart? Well, anyways, okay. 
So where you see where the that circle with the circle inside of it, that's the sun. And the one below it is the earth. Those two gates are two aspects of your incarnation cross. And then the gates on the other side of those same placements are the other two aspects of your incarnation cross. So those four gates are literally what creates and makes up your incarnation cross, which is your purpose. So those are going to be really like 70% of your chart and the important parts of your chart. Um, this chart, by the way, is taken from my website. So you can now look up your chart on my website, which I'm so excited about. But um, yeah, so that's like what is made up your incarnation cross. If you like scroll down when you pull up your chart, it'll actually tell you the incarnation cross name. And then it will tell you like the numbers. Those numbers are the gates that make up your incarnation cross. So those are super, super crucial to your purpose and like your mission and literally like what your whole kind of life purpose, like literal, it's like, how do I even articulate this? Like that's literally why you're here. Like that's the evolution of your life is to express yourself through those gates and whatever they mean for you. Um, which by the way, I have a guide to all the gates, all the channels, like pretty much your whole chart. On my website as well it's called the cosmos within you i wrote a book it's an ebook right now it's going to be a real book eventually but right now it's just an ebook and you can get that on my website as well um the i also talk about i have a video on this on my youtube the different types of incarnation crosses so whether you're a right angle or that's going to tell you um, i think yeah when you pull up your chart on my website it will tell you right angle left angle or juxtaposition Juxtaposition is only going to be um, your incarnation cross if you are a 4-1 profile because the type of angle you have as your incarnation cross corresponds to your profile. So your profile is also a really big part of your purpose. This is deeply complex. So <laughs> to start, just like really understand the gates that your sun and earth are in on both sides of your chart, which is going to be the purple and the blue. Um, and then what else was I going to say? Oh, I have a YouTube video going over each different like angle of the incarnation crosses. So like if you're a right angle, it means you have a personal destiny. If you're a left angle, your destiny is more of a transpersonal one. If you have a juxtaposition, which again is only going to be for the four one profiles, then your destiny is kind of fixed. And the how of how you align with your incarnation cross, which is your purpose, is your strategy and authority. This is why strategy and authority in the human design system is so crucial to not only understand, but be living by. Like before you make any decision, you want to make sure you're tapping into your strategy and authority and making that decision in alignment with your strategy and authority, because that's literally the how of how you align with your specific purpose, which is the what of your incarnation cross. Um, and then in astrology, so I actually have a, an audio life purpose career reading where I walk through all these aspects in your chart, um, which you can book through the link in my bio. It's an audio reading. If you scroll down the link in my bio, it's towards the bottom of the page. I go over all of this in your human design and I go over the astrology of your life purpose as well, which I look to um, your midheaven, your north node, your 10th house. Um, your Chiron, and really kind of anything else that relates to those placements that you have in your chart. <clears throat> so that is, yeah, how you can use astrology and human design to align with your life purpose and mission. I'm going to take some water. Stay hydrated. How do I get rid of this? Okay. Yeah, you're so welcome, Emily. For those who are here will be watching this later. Kelsey is freaking amazing. Oh, at this, I highly recommend her. Thank you, Yoni. You're the best. Right angle cross of contagion. Nice. Left, left ankle cross of migration. Awesome. So yeah, there are over 700 different combinations of incarnation crosses. So they are each very different and unique and specific to you as well as like what else is in your design. Reading it holistically, not isolating anything is important as well. Because we all have such a different and unique purpose and why we're here and how you can align with that is literally like in your chart, the codes of your chart, so to speak. Okay, so I have time for a couple more questions. If any of y'all have any questions on anything I've touched on so far, um, 
I'm going to take some more from my podcast as well. I think I had one more that I didn't get to yet. So, okay, someone asked, what does it mean when the gates aren't fully filled in? Excuse me. My 1222 gate is only halfway filled. The whole line isn't. If you know what I mean, please answer because this part is confusing for me. So the 1222 that this person is referring to, oh, and I can actually use a chart example again. Um, yeah, so the 12 you can see comes out of the throat. It might be small for you, but the 12 gate comes out of the throat. The 22 gate comes out of the solar plexus. When those, both of those gates are filled in, when there's a planetary placement in both of those gates at the time of your birth, that creates the full channel, which creates definition. Like if this person had it, I believe this, yeah, this is Kendall Jenner, because I just did a TikTok about her. If this person had the 1222 channel, then her throat and her solar plexus would be colored in or defined. That's what creates definition in centers is connecting to another center through a channel. If you just have one of those gates, like yeah, Kendall Jenner even just has, she just has gate 22, which you can see in blue down there, then that's just called a gate. And for her, it would be a dormant gate because that center, her solar plexus center is not defined. Um, if you have definition in a center and there's a gate coming out of it that doesn't connect to another center, it doesn't make a full channel, it's just a gate, that is called a hanging gate. Um, so it's a, an active kind of part of your design because you have definition in that center, um, but versus if you don't have definition in that center and you still have a gate there, it's going to be a dormant gate. It's going to need, it's going to need a transit or it's going to need a connection from someone else who has the other end of that channel, who has that gate that you don't have that you're missing, um, to make that channel and create definition in that center and the other center that connects to that center through that channel. Hopefully that makes sense. A lot of, um, human i'm working on a youtube right now that's like the language of human design because there are just so many different terms it's like you literally need to know like the language to be able to understand what people are talking about when they talk about it um, that's also what i talk about in my ebook as well just walk you through really simply but i'm excited to be able to release this youtube video soon so let me see if you guys have any other questions 5-2 emotional manifesting generator. Wow, nice. 5-2 is a rare profile. So yeah, if you have a 5-1, a 5-2, a 6-2, or a 6-3 profile, your incarnation cross is going to be left angle, which is going to make your destiny more of a transpersonal one. Um, which again, I have a YouTube video talking about that as well and going into detail. Um, let's see, are there any other questions I missed? Someone asked me, how's life in Hawaii? I'm not in Hawaii anymore. <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. I definitely learned a lot. Uh, Hawaii is not all it's cracked up to be, to be honest. It's beautiful and it's amazing, but it will send you on a freaking journey. And if you're not ready for it, it can really shake your freaking world. <laughs> uh, like it kind of did for me. Also be warned, there's a lot of bugs there, like spiders, Nothing can kill you there, but there are just so many bugs, like, because life just really thrives there, at least on Maui, where I was, but I'm pretty sure it's true on every island, like cockroaches, mosquitoes, tons of bugs and life just thriving in Hawaii. I do miss some of the fresh fruit, for sure. Um, okay, let me see. Oh, someone asked, I've had this question I've been trying to answer, but I've noticed that my design component of my chart is that of a projector's body graph. Does that mean I should consider listening to projector information as well? This actually came from my YouTube, I think. Yes. So if your unconscious chart in human design is a projector, that's going to mean that that side of you is some a part of yourself that you're less aware of. And something about the unconscious too is that other people see it more clearly in you than you do yourself. So I have a really <laughs> good example and story of this. I have four placements in Aquarius in my unconscious side. And I once had someone ask me, a uh, really, really intuitive friend actually, this is how I know I'm like, I need to rest. This is a projector part of me. I'm like no longer able to talk cohesively. 
um, <laughs> she asked me, you seem like an Aquarius to me. And I was like, no, I don't have any Aquarius in my astrology chart. Like, I don't know where that comes from. And then I found my unconscious astrology and human design. And I was like, I literally have four planets in Aquarius. Like, <laughs> so that's kind of a, uh, an example of how the unconscious part of you, your unconscious chart in human design shows up. Um, is other people probably pick up on it and see it more clearly than you do. So bringing awareness to that can really give you insight into kind of like the hidden part of yourself that you maybe didn't know that you had. Um, and, and advice, someone asked me yesterday in my TikTok live, like what's some advice you would give to a projector? And I would say like just to rest more. And that being in your unconscious for this person that asked this question um, that has a projector type in their unconscious it's like you need to really be hyper aware of how much you need to rest and how much energy you truly have to do something um, and of course always checking in with your strategy and authority that's key that's number one but really just giving yourself more rest and more downtime is really going to help um, anyone that is a projector or has a projector part of them in their chart super super crucial and helpful to know and understand Emotional generator one three. Yeah, we got a lot of emotionals on on here today. Love it. Cool. So those are all the questions I had. Again, you guys, if you have any more, feel free to ask because I'm probably gonna hop off here in the next five minutes, just so I can. I'll probably go take a nap. Like honestly, <laughs> I cannot work as much as I used to. I don't know how I did that for so long. Like, but I've really realized I cannot work as much long hours anymore. I just, I just can't, I don't have it in me. What about having a triple split? So triple split is, I talk about this in my ebook and how you can navigate your chart as a triple split and where you're more sensitive in your chart because to conditioning because of the triple split. Um, but triple splits have a tendency to like repeat the same patterns. They kind of have, again, like being a triple split means your design is literally split into three different parts where those parts are operating together and connecting and communicating, but they're not communicating to the other parts of your design. Um, and triple splits are more sensitive in the areas where you're open or undefined. So that is something to be really aware of and um, hyper-focused on is how that conditioning can show up for you and how that not self can show up for you and where you're open versus split and quadruple definition. People need to be more aware of the gates that they're missing. And those are where they're more sensitive to conditioning, but triple split, you're more sensitive where you're open or where you're undefined. So yeah, I also go really in depth with that in my courses, um, my astrology and human design school and online trainings. That makes total sense, yep. <laughs> yeah, and triple splits too. I mean, anyone that has a split definition, whether it's one split or triple split or quadruple split needs to be really just aware of the parts that, where they're defined and how they can nurture those parts of themselves that are defined and like kind of bring them into more cohesive awareness and operation. But it also sometimes requires being around people in a place where you can still be alone, like being at a bookshop or a coffee shop. like. I have split definition and I love to work at coffee shops because I just feel like, I almost just feel like more like whole, like more complete and more like able to like focus and do work and just bust things out. Um, but also that being said, being around a lot of other people, I do need to be aware of when I'm taking in their energy and like need to clear that out and where that's conditioning me as well. So it's like, you know, all requires awareness. That's what this whole system is all about, is awareness and observation. So, yeah. Thanks for being here, guys. You guys asked such great questions today. I'm really, really excited to put this replay elsewhere on my podcast, and it'll probably be on YouTube as well if you, like, hopped in halfway through. There's some juicy goodness that came through today, so... I appreciate you all, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll connect again soon here in the future. Love you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.